Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Jeremy A. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, look at what Elon said last night. He's talking about pay-per-view money, so I'm glad that I'm not the only one. However, on a more serious note, I really think this news item is going overlooked. So Elon Musk gave a factory tour at Giga Austin to Marty Walsh, the labor secretary. And if you're not familiar, Marty Walsh actually has some deep, strong ties to the union. And that's part of why this is such a big deal for Tesla and the relationship with the government moving forward. At this point, we don't have a ton of detail for what this conversation actually looked like. All we really know is they talked about inflation, American innovation, and job creation in Texas. However, I do know that there are many reporting agencies with emails out to Elon and Marty looking for some more color in this situation. And perhaps one of the most important lines, Elon said he wants to keep the conversation going. Now, Marty actually has a really interesting background and a great story. I'll spare you most of the details however he became the first union leader to run the department being the labor secretary in over four decades and just a life lesson here before you bash somebody especially publicly just remember you usually have no idea what they've been through in life and why they are the way they are in marty's case he's been very vocal about his past and things that he struggled with however just so you guys know he survived lymphoma as a child owing his recovery to health coverage fought for and won by the union obviously that's going to have an impact on one's life walsh dropped out of college struggled with alcoholism he's been in recovery for a long time reportedly doing well he also took classes at night to earn his college degree. Before he was elected mayor of Boston, he led the Boston Building Trades Council. However, the most important takeaway here are his deep ties to union labor and building this relationship with Elon and Tesla. Hopefully that he'll take back into the White House and disseminate some information that, hey, Tesla actually has some really incredible operations going on. Maybe we should open up these lines of communication. So yes, I am admittedly an optimist. However, it's conversations like this that need to happen to give people in power the information they needed about Tesla and hopefully the narrative can change. Here we have it, new Tesla price hikes for all model variants. This coming just days after Elon kind of warned everybody saying that, hey, SpaceX and Tesla are seeing inflationary pressure. So this should not come as a surprise. This is in addition to the recent $1,000 price increases we talked about a few days ago. So you can pause the screen if you'd like, but these price hikes are anywhere from $2,000 to $12,000 per vehicle. And to give you guys a little different perspective than what you're probably seeing elsewhere with these price hikes, let's go back to October 17th, 2020 and compare those prices prices to where they are now, only about 16 months ago. Do you remember when the Model 3 standard range was $38,000? Now it's 47 for a 24% increase. Looking at the Model Y, the long range variant has increased 26% in under two years. And if you say, okay, inflation is 8% a year, 16% over two years, roughly. However, that 8% number isn't really accurate given the specific materials that Tesla is going to be subject to that are seeing these inflationary pressures. However, you get the picture. And these comparisons for the S and X, honestly, they're not great. These are basically now new vehicles after the refresh. However, do you remember when a Model S used to cost $69,420 today at hundred grand basically for a 44% increase? And remember right now it is the dual motor all wheel drive. However, previously before the refresh, it was actually the long range version and the Plaid was the performance. And a similar story for the Model X. And then if you average all Tesla vehicles non-weighted, they used to cost about 66,000. Now that number is closer to 87,000 for a 33% increase over the last about 16 months. And yes, from a consumer standpoint, this isn't ideal unless of course you already have an order locked in and you get those lower prices or you have a Tesla and your used resale values are going up. Looking around, sadly, this is just how things are going to be until inflation can normalize and that will happen. It's just a matter of when. Most importantly here though, some people were asking, well, if I place an order for a Tesla, am I now gonna have to pay higher prices? The answer is no. If you've already placed your order, the price that you were looking at when you placed the order, that is what you will pay. So we're not gonna have a Rivian situation here where now now you're all gonna have to pay higher prices. So you're in the clear if you've already placed your order. And look, I know I've been critical of EV prices in the past saying that they're kind of out of reach, at least a new one and specifically Tesla's for a lot of the American consumers. However, this is a very relevant topic and worth discussing as the Model 3 has been named as one of the winners in Kelly Blue Book's five year cost to own awards for 2022. So what does this award include? Well, the price, maintenance costs, fuel or charging rates, state tax, registration fees, and the car's depreciation over a five year ownership period. So pretty comprehensive. 
And most of us already know this by now, but to have sources that yes, some people still look at and care about like Kelly Blue Book saying that the five year cost to own for a Tesla is 48,233, specifically for the Model 3. Now, what's important or the numbers to remember, this is actually $16,411 less than the segment average, the segment being the electric luxury vehicle segment. So this is not compared to ICE vehicles and a no brainer obvious lower TCO or total cost of ownership. This is compared to other electric vehicles in the luxury segment and Tesla is still on average about $16,400 cheaper once again for the Model 3. Here we have some frustrating news from a delivery center in Germany as some thieves apparently stole some new wheels from Model 3s and Ys that were waiting to be delivered to customers. And reportedly the thieves did this on a Friday night or early Saturday morning and as if stealing the wheels and leaving the car sitting on cinder blocks wasn't enough, they also smashed the glass roof on one of the vehicles. So this is probably tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage, not to mention these customers that were about to pick up their vehicles are now obviously going to have to wait. And honestly, for people that are doing stuff like this, in my opinion, if you get caught, I think you should have to say goodbye to your pinky finger. We need stricter penalties for stuff like this. On a better note, here we get some exciting news from Green the Only Hardware 4 made an official appearance in the production code with beta 10.11. Rumors were it would be very similar to Hardware 3. I don't know what rumors he's referring to. In everything I've read, it's going to be pretty different. However, he said the differences appear to be more than that. Exact details remain nebulous, but official launch is likely pretty soon. So of course, just one man's opinion. However, let's actually talk about Hardware 4 and everything we know so far to bring you up to speed. If you're new, Hardware 4 is going to be the new full self-driving computer. Hardware 3 was called FSD Computer 1. This is going to be FSD Computer 2, the next iteration of the chip that essentially powers full self-driving. Elon has said before this new chip will be four times more capable than Hardware 3, and this chip is designed by Tesla. However, they don't actually manufacture it. The manufacturing is done by Samsung, reportedly. In other words, Hardware 4 will be 1,000 times safer than a human driver versus Hardware 3, which Elon has said is about 300% safer. Hardware 4 is supposed to use seven nanometer technology, which isn't as advanced as five nanometers. However, it's going to be easier to produce using the seven nanometer tech, and it should be more reliable. A quick note on retrofit so if you currently have hardware 3 and you're wondering am i going to get a free upgrade to hardware 4 well anybody that tells you a definite yes or no i think is just lying or guessing it all depends on how hardware 4 shakes out how big the chip is what the connections look like is the wiring going to change and maybe most importantly is tesla going to change the camera suite that goes with hardware 4 and elon has told us before that it was originally going to debut hardware 4 in the cybertruck elon also spoke of new cameras with this hardware 4 but there's been no detail really given in terms of resolution, camera placement, or sensor size. However, from Chris Zhang on Twitter, somebody who has relationships with Tesla suppliers has told us Tesla may use Sony's new IMX490 sensor. This basically has an increased field of view. It would be a higher resolution. We're talking 5.4 megapixels versus the current 1.2 megapixels for the current front facing cameras. If you're not familiar right now, Tesla has three front facing cameras mounted on the windshield above the rear view mirror. One is a wide angle, one is standard, and the last is a narrow view. These are all lenses with separate sensors. Now with his new wider angle, presumably it would have better resolution and would reduce the cameras here possibly from three down to one. And one of the bigger deals with some of the speculation is that this new sensor could support LED flicker mitigation, which would make the results more reliable. As mentioned, the reports are that Tesla is working closely with Samsung for hardware four and Elon did say hardware three is already capable of FSD and becoming safer than a human for whatever that's worth. A user on Reddit shared this quick video of the new lane change path visualization in 10.11. So as you can see in the blue, that needs to be clear for the lane change to take place. Of course, we have a few people complaining that now the car is not moving over as quickly as they would like, but once again, don't use these anecdotes to paint with broad brushstrokes. Tesla Adri shared, starting in Q2, Europe will receive the first Model 3 and Y without radar. What does this mean? Well, the ones coming from Shanghai have still included radar through quarter one. Presumably this is going to change in quarter two. The only other change maybe worth noting is the headlamp electronic control unit update. So maybe moving toward those matrix LEDs. 
A quick note here from a user on Reddit, at least in select locations. Tesla is no longer performing seasonal tire swaps on or off rim through mobile service or service center appointments. So not great for Tesla owners who were using mobile service to do stuff like this. However, it's pretty clear that any tire shop should be able to do something like this for you. And this will open up Tesla service centers and mobile techs, at least to some degree. Here we have a new petition going around basically to remove Andre Baylor from his post as he's been somebody shooting against Tesla that has been opposed to this new Gigafactory in Berlin due to the water use situation. So if you're somebody that's been very worked up over the delays at Giga Berlin, maybe this is a petition that you can read through and sign if you'd like. I will link it below if you're interested. A note from Automotive News on this new potential Panasonic plant in the United States, maybe Oklahoma or Kansas, for 4680s for Tesla. The only thing this article said is that one, there may be new battery lines other than 4680s at this theoretical plant, and two, there has been nothing decided as of yet. So to assume that this is just a done deal, I think would be a bit reckless. However, fingers crossed this does come to fruition. And here we have Mercedes getting one of its Chinese suppliers to build some EV batteries here in the States. Chinese battery tech giant Envision will supply Mercedes with vehicle batteries from a new US plant starting mid-decade. US production of the electric EQS SUV should begin in June. And once the production ramps up, this factory for Mercedes is expected to churn out 6,000 EVs per month. And this is actually a pretty cool partnership, one that I think will fit very well with the move to EVs and just some of the clientele that typically go to Starbucks. Not to judge or get into that, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And yes, I know this is a small deal. We're talking 60 chargers at 15 locations. However, hopefully this is the start of something bigger. This partnership between Volvo and Starbucks is going to be powered by ChargePoint and it's going to be on a route from Denver to Starbucks headquarters in Seattle. Volvo owners will use the chargers at no cost or at preferential rates while drivers of all other EVs will be able to use the stations for a fee. And the Swedish automaker Volvo plans to have the job done by the end of this year, starting this in the summer. So remember, anytime your friends or family start talking about, oh, there's so many gas stations and there's not nearly enough chargers, just get people out of the thought process of thinking that chargers have to be just like gas stations. It should be home charging number one and then location charging number two at Walmart, at Target, at Starbucks. We want EV chargers where people are already going. So while they're there shopping or eating or doing whatever they were going to do, they can also charge their vehicles while they're there. And I'll send you guys off with something a little bit random today, but it's the view of the surface of Mars. Kind of surreal to think that there could be civilization in this place sometime in the future. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.